Welcome to episode 13 of A1 TV, The Mark Show. And today I've got another great guest. The guest, we always like looking for stories and stories behind people and why people do what they do, especially elite sports people or elite sports coaches or people that come up with concepts. And uh, today I've got Clint Proctor. Now, uh, Clint has had a very diverse lifestyle, cricketer, footballer, coach, and now into a new app, which we'll talk about. But Clint, welcome to the show. Welcome to A1 TV and welcome to episode 13. I want to start way back at Drew and tell me about your life lifestyle and drew and when you first brought up Clint. Thanks Danny. First I'll say thanks for having me mate. I really appreciate it. Yeah, humble beginnings back home in the country. Grew up in Druin, one of uh, six kids, five sisters. Yeah, I guess I'm grateful for where I am at the moment and in my life. Really uh, happy with the pathway I've taken. you got five sisters, mate. That's a big challenge in itself. I'm sure they give you some advice along the way. But Elite Pathways, you were very young that you worked out that you were going to play under-18 footy or NAB footy or TAC Cup footy as it was back then. How did that go along? Well, like everyone, you know, initially just playing for my home club at Druin in the uh, under fifteen and got the opportunity to go through the schoolboy system and under 16s. Actually, I had a little bit of a setback probably, you know, when I was going through about 16, 17 years of age where, you know, I needed to get a lot fitter and healthier, had some issues. Actually, thanks to my sister who was really high-level netballer, Christy, I probably followed her, I guess, dedication and discipline and started to learn about what real work ethic was away from sport as in playing itself. I always had a natural ability to play most sports, but to go another level, you needed to be, I guess, a little bit more professional. So she was a great role model and someone to learn off. And I started just simply working harder, watching my diet, exercising more. And all of a sudden, you know, you play a better brand of football and lucky enough to play at a high level with the TAC Cup where, you know, I played for Vic Country. We won the national championships, played with some awesome footballers, the likes of uh, Andrew Walker and Cole Sylvia, Dave Mundy, who's still playing now. You know, we had an amazing team, fortunate enough to forge my way into the VFL through that system, which is cool. Now, I'll ask you this point, and I want to talk to you about it a bit later, but I'll ask you the point. At that moment, at the time of you going through elite programs, because you are a good cricketer, I've, I know I've followed your fortunes through cricket, and were you a better cricketer or footballer way back then? I was probably very similar on a level, Stoney. I played for the all Gippsland team and I was fortunate enough to have a really good series where we played up in Shepparton and against all the regions. And then from there, there was an opportunity to go into the Vic system itself. But it was at the timing where, again, cricket was finishing and footy was about to start. So I needed to, and it was my draft year, you know, so I, I had to sort of finish it and then just work into the TAC Cup. And then from there, once I went into that, I sort of just parked cricket and played locally with my club at Druin. So, you know, obviously you have to um, eventually at one stage choose one or over the other in, in a sense of where you're going to play the highest level. And, you know, unfortunately cricket got put on the side. And when you're playing, because again, you take a pathway, you'll go down a football path and play, you know, in the VFL, or play at Druin, you know, the coaching aspect. Because I know that, and we'll get into it about your coaching aspirations because you're going to coaching now and you're the coaching path. But at that point when you're playing, do you think coaching would ever come into calculations? Funny you ask that. My father, I grew up watching him coach from a young age when I was five years of age. He coached, you know, um, a number of clubs around Gippsland from Druin itself, clubs out in the Allen Bank and District League like Allen Bank. He won premierships at Puong and Allen Bank as well. So I guess I wasn't fortunate enough to go to work with my father like, a lot of my um, friends were, you know, they had tradies, fathers that were tradies and things like that. So you go to work with them and where well, my old man worked in insurance and, you know, that was dead set boring. So I didn't want to sit in that office. So my outlet with him was to go and coach and to spend time at a footy club. So I literally grew up in the sheds of a footy club environment. So it's funny. It's, it's almost like, like I, I'm not, surprised at where I sit right now in, in what I do for work and also in where I am coaching at the moment with <clears throat> Box Hill. So it's all because of the environment and foundations I grew up with. And that's how I got into coaching, really, because it was essentially in my in my blood, in my family. Because you played at Frankston Williamstown. How many games did you play in yep. total of VFL football? So I think I, I would have played over 100. And at both levels, with all respect, you know, the there was a development league back then where I played in premierships at Williamstown. And then I spent about, I think it was eight to nine years in 
the in the system, you know, at the VFL itself. So, you know, I was really driven and um, committed to playing as high as level as I possibly could until, you know, unfortunately, it just, you know, there comes a time where you got to go, well, that's enough. And again, we'll, we'll move to the coaching. You know, you've said with your dad, you spent a lot of time as a kid in the sheds yep. watching your dad. What sort of coach was your dad, Clint? Uh, well, I'd suggest he was old school, but then he'd probably say he's ahead of his time in a little bit. I think with my father, he was a really great man manager of, and also a great person, you know, in regards to relationships he has with people. Obviously, he works in insurance as well, you know, so he had that rapport and that contact and communication skills. So, yeah, I think um, I learned a lot off him in, in the way that he dealt with relationships. And subconsciously, I probably wasn't even thinking of it at the time, you know, but it sort of rubs off on you the way he had the effect with people and how popular he is in the community itself. So you played a lot of games with Franks and Williamstown and you come to a point when your career, when you, we all know we get to the point where we go, oh, I'm getting slower, I'm getting older, they're catching me. And then you had a chance to get involved with Williamstown. Um, well, you know, she went to Tasmania and you got involved with AFL Tasmania and the Burning Footy Club. Yep. What did you learn from that experience? That is the best experience I've ever had. You know, really taking the risk to leave your comfort of your own state. Full credit to my wife who come along with me as well. Going to Burnie enabled me to become, I guess, really a responsible uh, young man, you know, taking on a role as a captain coach or, you know, a playing coach, I should say, of the Dockers in a state league environment that's really striving to be as professional as possible and managing, you know, all the stakeholders from uh, volunteers through to the high level government and uh, local council and things like that. It was, you know, one of the best experiences I've ever, ever had and I would jump at another opportunity if it presented as well, probably in the future. So from that experience, you, uh, you learn about man management, about working with different levels of a football or a sporting club because we know it's multi Faceted. There's a lot of people involved with it. And, you know, you had a chance to come back to Melbourne. And I think it was around that time that you got involved with Williamstown because you're one of your old clubs. And I know there was a few VFL clubs that had a chat to you about it, but you chose Williamstown because of what reason, Clint? Well, I think they were my first initial senior club, to be honest, Stoney. Like, you know, I grew up in Drew and played under 15s and 16s, but the TAC and the under 18s, you don't get much senior football because you're playing there. So Williamstown, I played from 18 years of age through to I was 22. So really, they were my senior clubs. I remember playing with blokes like Brad Lloyd and Troy West and all these unbelievable people. I still have friendships with them today, you know, and I was just a young pup. So Williamstown was like my club, if you know what I mean. I moved to Frankston because, you know, it was in its fifth year and sixth year of that alignment with an AFL club. And obviously a standalone opportunity is going to be more attractive for a young guy such as myself at that stage. So I moved to Frankston for that reason itself and, and because of work, because it was all over in Bayside. So really, but coming back to it, Williamstown was my number one club. It's my home. I really feel like I belong there. And, you know, having the connections with Andy Collins through Paul Kennedy, who was my captain at Williamstown, and we played together at, uh, sorry, at Frankston. You know, it was a nice fit. It was a great opportunity to go back and uh, and learn under Colo at a club that I knew I felt a part of. At this point, you actually started a role with the Alcohol and Drug Foundation, where uh, you still are today. And that role in itself interests me because I actually spent some time with the Drug Foundation a few years ago and the whole thing about alcohol and drugs. And what role do you play? play at the um, Alcohol and Drug Foundation? So essentially it's all around primary prevention, Stoney. So everything upstream, you know, a lot of people be like, oh, you know, you're going in there, you're um, putting your hand down, you're saying, you know, putting the foot down, saying, like, you can't be drinking, doing this, you know, you can't be taking drugs and, and all that. And of course, you know, there's elements of that, but this is about preventative, I guess, measures and what we call is putting in protective factors in clubs. They happen subtly without even noticing in the club's environment itself, you know. For an example, like just making sure that, you know, if the bars open let's make sure and this might sound simple to you know the common person listening but make sure water's available and we've got food available now if you have those two things it's going to prevent you know someone from drinking excessive alcohol and possibly being dehydrated and then having too much to drink and we know when accidents happen and things like that this is where issues start to to rear their heads so the work we do at the adf is just we instill clubs the appropriate strategies in their policies implementation and things like that so i think it's really cool that i can speak to committees um, organizations and clubs in you know local community and help them you know with their behavior side of things without even um you know speaking to the players without even going to the coaches and things like that it's just through the shift of the environment and it's pretty cool to watch to be honest so i'm really passionate about that work and um and glad i've been able to find my way into it obviously you spent some time with Williamstown and northern boy and so now you're at box hill 
And so you see your role as an evolution from where you started at way down in Burnie to the evolution today where you're at Box Hill under uh, Sam Mitchell and Andy Collins yep. and Aaron Cornelius, I think, is there as well. It must seem like a bit of a family with all that connection and evolution in your coaching. Yeah, well, I think you know as well, you know, once you, if you spend time in the industry, you do it reasonably well, people start to respect you, you know, opportunities present. So I think it's, um, you know, one of the things I've sort of taken with my coaching is when I was sort of going at Burnie, I was probably in a hurry, you know, and, and really looking for the next phase and looking for the next opportunity. I really have realized, especially with COVID, I think it's given a lot of perspective for people as well, is that, you know, just deal with the present and enjoy that moment for what it is and whatever you're doing in that point in time. So, for example, the last sort of 12 to 15 months for me at Box Hill has been just wonderful to stay in that present moment. And I've really made a real conscious effort to just, you know, really work hard with my players I'm coaching in the forward line, try and help them be as better people off the field and on the field see if I can also add to the you know Box Hill footy club as well and, and play a small role there in, in the culture and in the environment and making it a welcoming place and things like that and I think that you become a better coach for it and um, that's one thing I've sort of learned over a period of time is that you know I don't want to be in an environment where I'm surviving I would rather be in one where I'm thriving at and really loving being a part of and Box Hill is, is that in itself at the moment it's going really great. Now, for those people who know me, know that I've got a massive interest in the mind and how the mind works and the moment is the moment. And mental yeah. health is a big thing. One of the reasons I get on is because I was really interested in what you've just created in the new app, the Check Me App, and about why you created that, how that come about, and where you want to take the app. Because people, everyday life, their mind sometimes can get out of control. There's issues at home. They're out of control with how they feel, not eating right. There are stresses away from sport. Is that one of the reasons why you created the Check Me App for that reason? Mental health for me, like 10, 15 years ago, I, I was lucky. I was at Williamstown and we actually had a great facilitator and person you could speak to is in Bruce Davis. I don't know if you've heard yeah. of him. And, and BD was like, he was like our psychologist welfare, but he just wasn't titled that. You know what I mean? He, he was just that guy you could just go to. That We all felt really comfortable having a conversation around how our work's going. We're really struggling with relationship. You know, man, I'm struggling with my lifestyle at the moment. I'm hanging around some bad people. I need to change some things or whatever it is. And he would assist in that without even having that title and I was fortunate enough to have the right role models around me and the right I guess family backing and um, understanding about how to make good decisions but not everyone has that and I think not every sporting club has that either and you know sporting clubs don't have that and essentially you know I'm looking at an industry I work in because I work with sporting clubs every day and I'm seeing some wonderful organizations right go out there and speak about mental health and they're doing brilliant right and they're talking about the stigma of it and how that you know we've got some awesome resources and there's great opportunities for clubs to connect with the services and so on. But one of the things that I kept coming back to was how is it sustainable? You come in and have a conversation, you tell a story about your challenges of mental health and things like that with if you're a lived experience person, for example, or a professional. And that is so powerful and amazing and it has a great place in society and in sporting clubs. But I kept questioning like what happens when you go and what happens when the resources are put on the wall and what happens when you know the information is distributed through the communications, what happens around the sustainability of actually having a conversation? And that's through my period of only in time, I'm 36 years of age now and I've been in sporting clubs all my life. And this just kept rearing its head with mental health problems and they bring in another person, bring in another organisation or someone else to do something. So I wanted to create a platform that was sustainable, simple, really quick and able to have, you know, essentially initiate a conversation for a young person that I was able to get at Williamstown Footy Club that not all community clubs can put together. And that's what the app is essentially doing. So how have you found, you've obviously you've launched the app and you've got it using at Box Hill. How has it been received? You get some feedback from it. How do you see it at this moment? I think it's still wonderful, to be honest. And of course I'm biased, right? You know, I've built it and I've got a personal attachment to it. But, you know, recently we just did a quick research survey, which I'm really big on, right? And I really want to make sure we've been doing this Check Me pilot program for essentially 12 to 15 months now. And, you know, one of the key things for me is to come out of here with the appropriate information, data and evaluation to prove that it actually works. And look, what we're finding with Box Hill is that in a period of now about three months, we've had over 700 check-ins. Now, with those 700, well, I think we've had an average around about 400 to 300 people that have actually had conversations with a coach at the club. Now, apart from a coach reaching out to a player saying, hey, how you going? This is initiated by the player themselves, which I think is phenomenal because a player to feel comfortable in an environment to actually say, 
hey, I'd like to talk to you about my performance or my relationship or my well-being or how I'm actually going is, you know, really difficult to get. The app's essentially initiating these conversations, which is really cool. So me as a player, I play at Box Hill. I know about the app and I have something going on. I mean, Sam says, you know, what's going on with you? Your footy's not going really well. They basically just are able to tap into the app and say, I want a conversation. Is that how it basically works? Yeah, so what happens is we've set it up for two um, notifications to go out for the boys. So potentially on a Tuesday morning and a Thursday morning, they'll get a notification saying, hey, you should check in. It's as simple as saying, how are you feeling today? And they might be feeling, you know, let's say they're feeling you know, not great, unhappy. And we ask them what's the reason for it. And it can be a multiple a range of things. It might be like work, could be relationships, could be finance. It's about six different options. I select one and then we just simply give them the option to talk to a coach at the club. So I call them the key contact. So who they might be, we've got them aligned. So it's Sam, there'd be Colo. We've got the welfare officer, one of the guys who's a leadership group. We have the club psychologist or whoever's in that welfare role itself. And then uh, we, ha- we have a trainer as well, medical staff. And all of them align to the football departments. You and I both know how they all work. Yeah. And they, they can just select one of them. And then what happens is it's so simple. If I'm the welfare officer, for example, Mark Stone's feeling really unhappy about your relationships at the moment and you feel comfortable talking to me, you can tell me how you want to talk. So you might be like, Croc, I want to speak to at the club. So I'll get a, no- I'll get a notification saying, Stoney's feeling unhappy about his relationship. Um, he wants to have a chat at the club about it. And then what will happen is the great thing is, you know, it might be like six or seven hours past because you've checked in in the morning and you come into the club like you normally would. And I can just grab you and talk to you and, you know, subtly have that conversation. The cool thing about the app is we've got a tool to support coaches and conversations as well. But I might be able to have a conversation with you, Stoney, and be like, hey, Stoney, mate, how's your day been? And things like that. And we can just get through it. And then we can unpack, you know, what the challenges are actually presenting at home in your relationship and things like that. One of the cool feedbacks we've been getting is, some of the players don't even realise that they use the app because they've forgotten about it. They're so busy and got so many things going on and it only takes 40 seconds to use. These conversations are actually starting to happen naturally even though the app's sort of using it in its place, which is great that, you know, that they trust it. At this moment, where does it go from here? The general public or for sports clubs, obviously. What's left for development with it now? Where does it go from here? Yeah, so I think right now we're just wrapping up. Well, I think Sam will want it to continue. I was going to say, can we wrap up the, the pilot of Box Hill? But I think given in the you know the environment we're in right now we're literally in the lockdown and evidently it's gone up in the level of engagement it's had over the last couple of weeks and that's not a surprise we'll probably roll this all the way through to the end of the year that's the pilot for example because it's working i was going to finish it actually at the end like last month but we've kept it going because of covid because i need to wrap it up and essentially evaluate it and make sure that we give it the appropriate research that it's actually you know doing its job and, and working and then hopefully i'm predicting in a couple of months we should have it all available for clubs to download and to implement in your own club that's good because it's only in pile at the moment so people can't tap in at the moment is clint proctor keen to coach at a high level or get involved with a a vfl club as a senior coach or afl is that where clint proctor would like to go as far as his coaching goes good question check needs change a lot but look might be a bit hard that question too clint hey it might be a bit hard that question so you you can answer it's 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 a great question question because like you know you're at the bfl level i'm a part-time coach i'm having obviously relationships and impact with the afl boys but i come back to like staying in the present right and and working in the moment and just dealing with what i've got and i just reflect on my own journey starting i reckon five six years ago i would have said to you i'm hellbent mate i'm, I'm heading to the afl that's my, my goal but now that I've sort of, you know, parked that a little bit and just focused on, you know, what is best for the for the players and, and how I can assist them with my coaching, I really feel like I'm actually coaching at a higher level than I have before. Because when you've got your own agenda and your own objectives, you can lose sight of actually what your purpose is and what you're trying to achieve. And with that, check me, my own work, I work with the ADF and sporting clubs. Mate, I'm too busy to even think about it, to be honest. And I've got a great job. I've got a job forever, okay? I've got a great app that I'm working with that I've unpacked and I'm lucky just to have a, a role at Box Hill with the forwards and to be part-time. I've seen how brutal the industry of the AFL is to some of my friends and colleagues who don't have jobs anymore. And I've got to make sure that if and when I go to the AFL, that, you know, I'm ready and I've got everything lined up because like anything, if you if you take the risk, you've got to make sure that you're prepared and ready for it. So to answer your question, I'm just staying in the present and um, helping out the boys as well as I can. It's a very good answer. You always worry about the moment and you take care of the moment, then the rest will take care of itself, Clint. That's how it yeah. works. Very good. Clint Proctor, thank you for joining on episode 13 of the Mark Show on A1 TV. It's been great. I'll be keeping an eye on Check Me and make sure the public keeps an eye on Check Me. It's a great app. I reckon it's a great content.
concept. It works really well for sports people and people in general life because the mind, as I said, can be an evil thing and pressures of life are difficult. So Clint, thanks for joining me. We'll talk in the near future, I'm sure. Look forward to it. Thanks, Tony. Cheers, mate.